Section 14.3 Concentration and Rate If you remember from last time, we had the rate, so let's, let's write this down. The rate at which a reaction occurs is going to be equal to the negative, the first guy. So let's say the reactants. Let's say you have A and B. Let's say you have A plus B um, yields C plus D. And A is the coefficient in front of A, and B is the coefficient in B, etc. So these two guys on the left are going to be going away. That means that these rates are going to be negative. This is going to be disappearing. And you're going to have a fraction, 1 over the coefficient of A, times the change in the concentration of A, divided by the change in time, how long it took for it to disappear. And that's going to be equal to B as well. So you're going to do the same thing. This is 1 over the coefficient of B, times the change of the concentration of B, change in time. This is going to be equal to C. Now, it's not going to be negative because these are going away and these are being produced at the same time. So this will be 1 over C times the change in the concentration of C per time. And that's going to equal the same for the D. So we have a, that's a delta D, concentration of D per unit of time. So that is... That is the basic rate, but you cannot always guess what the what the rates are going to be based upon just the coefficients that you have. You know what that the rate is disappearing, that they're equal to each other. So if you knew the rate of one, you would know the rate of the other. So if I could tell you the rate of this one, then I would also know the rates of all the others. I can know that they're equal. But I wouldn't be able to guess from the balanced equation what the rate is. You actually have to do experiments and, and find out what they, the concentrations are doing at various times as you're measuring the time. So let's see how that works. Now I mentioned once before that the most helpful rate is the initial rate. Right as it's starting. So you have all of your material that all of the atoms are there that can start reacting with each other and whatever the rate at the very beginning is is really helpful so if you were to take the the initial rate of various concentrations and then find out compare those rates of how fast that they're changing you could see that the rates have a lot to do with what the concentration is Remember, if you've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of 7th grade girls, it's more and more likely that even a dorky 7th grade boy will get a dance. If you have enough girls, it's possible that somebody will dance with him. So that's what you're going to have here. So the if you increase the concentration, you're more likely for a reaction to occur. And that's what we're going to observe through this data. Okay, so let's look at some relationships. So in the first experiment, okay, in the first experiment, I have a 0.01 concentration of the ammonium, and uh, and it's at 0.2 in the 0.2 in the nitrite. Well, let's hold this constant so and, and double the first and see if there's a change. Okay, so we're going to hold the concentration of the nitrite uh, together. Now here's the balanced equation. You've got one nitrite plus one ammonium is going to yield a nitrogen gas and two waters. So it's a one to one to one to two balanced equation. So we're just going to take the constant, the initial uh, rate when we double the concentration of the first and leave the concentration of the second st uh, stable. Okay, so, and just see what it happens. So if I double here, so I'm going from one to two, so I'm doubling that, keeping this same, okay, that's the same. What happens from here to here? Well, from 5.4 to 10.8, it doubles. Okay. So if I if I double, if I double this, I double the rate. Okay. The rate's gonna double. 
Okay, so let's look at some other things. Uh, and it happens again, right? If we go to the three, it's going to go to 400. Okay, so if I, so what is that? If I go, if I double that, and now I four times it, then five to the four times four is going to be 21.5. So that's the same. I, I, as I double it, I'm going to double the rate. If I multiply it by four, I'm going to multiply the rate by four. So it's going to go up proportional to that. Okay, let's look at the let's look at a couple other ones. What if we um, leave this one alone? So I've got point point two, and I start this one at point oh two, and I move this one to point oh four, and keep this one same. Okay, so now I have a, a new experiment. I've doubled the nitrite, but I've left the ammonium same. What's going to happen? All right, so from here to here, what have we got? Ten point eight to 21.6 is doubled. That means if I double the concentration of the nitrite, I double the rate also. So what does it mean? It means that the that the rate is based a lot on the con the initial concentrations of the two reactants. Now this is never it's not always going to be the same. You're going to have to actually look at the the experiments and find out what those numbers tell you as to put as to what is going on with it all right now we need to show this concentration relationship so we saw that as you increased the concentration of ammonia the rate increased so that's proportional that's what this little guy means it's a proportionality as one goes up the other goes up we also saw as the nitrite went up the rate goes up so it's also proportional. So if you put those together, what that's going to tell you is that the rate is proportional to the product of both of the reactants. Okay, both of the reactants' products. And what also it's going to imply is that this is to the one power, and this is also to the one power. If the concentration changes based upon the concentra uh, the rate changes based upon the concentration changes, as one goes up, the other goes up, then it's it's to the one power, the concentration changes, then the rate changes as well. So when you put that together, the rate is going to equal some constant. Okay, that's called the rate constant, and it's just whatever number makes the math work, times the concentration of the first reactant times the concentration of the second reaction. So this equation is called the rate law. All of this is called the rate law. So the rate law is just what is the relationship between the concentration and the rate. That's the rate law. And the K is the rate constant. It's simply a number. It's a constant of proportionality. What makes this math, the math work? Uh, what times this times this equals the rate? And it's going to be a constant. It'll always be the same for this for this particular uh, thing. So uh, very, very useful, uh, very confusing to some people. You have to practice this, but, but uh, very useful in, in finding out how fast something may happen.